So Comica sent out the Adcaster C2 uh, for a review, but if you know me and you've been around the channel before, then you know that I'm extremely blunt when it comes to doing product reviews. It doesn't matter if somebody sent it out to me or not, or I purchased with my own money. I give my honest opinions and just be straightforward. And like I said, sometimes it's a little bit too blunt. So companies do not want to work with me in the future, or they do not want to come back and rework with me because again, I just tell you guys exactly my thoughts and opinions. Is it even worth the money? Are they upcharging you for brand tax? If you are new to the channel, my name is Squidhead Joe. I like to do product reviews that are budget friendly to content creators, depending on what type of product it is. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit expensive, but I think for what you get here, it's going to be actually kind of worth it. We'll get into my experience with using it um, in my workflow and everything and a little bit later into the video. But right now we're going to talk about the unboxing experience and my first initial thoughts. All right, so Future Squid here. In these kind of videos, I always get that one dude in the comments down below talking about you didn't really explain how the product works, etc. But these people don't realize that the video would be 40 something minutes long, if not an hour long when it comes to certain devices, especially a device like this. So what I will do is link a video in the description to a person who covered this device in that way. And the video was like 40 minutes long. Um, again, reviews when you're looking up them should not be spec sheets and like full depth of tutorials and all that stuff that should be coming from the actual manufacturer themselves. And you should be able to find that on their manufacturer's page or on their YouTube channel. When people do reviews like I am doing, they're supposed to be telling you how it was using the device, not every single facet and deep diving into the device. It's not the reviewer's job. It's the reviewer's job to tell you as a potential customer how it's going to affect your workflow or how is it going to impact your setup or what you're trying to do or wherever and is it going to solve your problems that you were looking to solve by purchasing a product that is what i'm doing here that is an actual review now back to past squid um, i would say straight out the box it does feel a little bit more heavier, I would say, than I initially thought it would be. Um, there's nothing bad or wrong with it or whatever. It's not too like absurdly heavy. Um, the footprint is actually smaller than what I thought or whatever from seeing pictures and stuff and videos uh, from advertisements. So that's pretty cool. The front facing screen or wherever the glossy part does look like a fingerprint magnet. Um, there was no protective little peel wherever to peel off the front of it. So that was kind of weird. It's not bad. It's just weird because usually those glossy parts have stuff like that. Um, but again, it's, it's neither, neither here nor there, but something like this, when you're going to be touching it, because again, it's an audio interface, you might not be touching all over that screen just a little bit, but you do have two knobs there. So your fingerprints might get around the knobs or wherever. So if that's something some people don't like smudges and stuff, me personally, it, it's nothing that's going to be, uh, I would say, off putting, at least to me, period. Now, I will say straight off the back, there is two versions of this. There's one in black that I have here. There's one in white. Um, unfortunately, they have not released the white version on Amazon. So when they sent this out to me, I was like, can I have the white one, please? And they're like, no, sorry. And I was like, man why because the setup that i usually go for i do have some black items or wherever but i want to get to the point to where i can have a clean all white aesthetic and if this is something that i'm going to put into my workflow i would love to have the white version so comico when it comes available please can I, can you send me out a white one so i can so i can you know have something that matches my setup that would be really awesome but Nevertheless, I'm still going to test this out. I know there is a white model out there. So if you want to wait on it or wherever, that would be up to you. Again, if you are interested in this product, there will be an affiliate link down in the description uh, to the Amazon store page where you can pick this up for yourself. Speaking of the price, it's around $189. I'll put the price on screen so you can visibly see it. There is a obviously a lot of knobs from reverbs to the sound pad volume to aux volume to the low mids and highs queuing EQing that perfectly. Um, you have a gain for both input puts for, uh, I would say dynamic microphone, 48 phantom power. So it can drive those microphones that need that require it and instrument uh, levels as well. So you can, you get two inputs on this. See, you have multiple uh, ports on the back you have a dedicated uh, usb type c cable which will go into your pc and then you have one for charging this thing because it can be used off a of battery and from what i've seen six hours uh, on the box itself has said that 
you do have a Bluetooth toggle or wherever. So again, you can connect different devices or wherever from, I would say, different connection types. Um, so it's all pretty cool straight off the bat. Uh, the faders, obviously, you have instrument one and two. I guess you can, that's increasing, um, I guess, the volume, the overall volume. There is two headphone ports at the bottom, which I really do like. Because again, if my me and my wife decide to do videos, uh, together we could have something with a dedicated headphone ports and plug in the thing i use personally which is the pc panel pro um, that allows me to have faders and knobs um, that's like a hundred dollar little uh interface that can control uh, volume outputs and stuff and i use that in conjunction with the wave xor and the wavelink software um, and I allow that allows me to EQ microphones and stuff like you're hearing right now, which is an audio mixer that I use from Fine Fine, the SC3 that I've covered before on the channel. That one's a fifty dollar my uh, audio mixer. Um, it has similar stuff to this, but it is lacking a lot of features. Obviously, if it's going to be fifty dollars, whereas this allows you to control everything on, I would say, the mixer itself. So you don't really need that extra software. The only way from just visibly looking or wherever is that this only allows you to physically hook up multiple stuff to the actual mixer itself, where I think on the Wavelink software, if I'm not mistaken, it's up to like nine different inputs. Um, and again, I have already another audio software or, or audio mixer plugged into that audio mixer, the Wavelink, and it's dragged into the Wavelink software. I have a wireless lavalier system and the Comica VM30 that I recently recovered, which is a wireless shotgun microphone hooked up to my camera. And both of those mics are able to be put right into the Wavelink software with EQs added on top of it so I don't have to edit it in post. Um, so as long as I'm in this room, all my microphones, everything or wherever is good to go. And essentially, I just have a bigger version of this with multiple inputs that have software. Now, the difference between that is that if you have software, then you know that there's always a chance for bugginess, uh, random crashes, uh, needing to update or wherever updates causing issues and stuff like that. Whereas something like this usually just has like a random firmware update or wherever, and that's it. And then on top of that, the Wave uh, XLR itself, it's just a little brick that has a, one giant knob on it and a capacitive mute button, that's it. And it costs like 10 to $20 less than this and it came out years ago and there's still no price decrease really unless you get a refurbished version and again this one just has a whole bunch of knobs and faders and stuff like that that allows you to control a lot of options from here whereas elgato is relying on software and the reason why i'm bringing up the elgato and the fine fine stuff is because again this is going to be from a perspective of somebody actually using this that's the perspective that reviewers should be approaching products from not just hey i got this box let me read everything that's on this box okay there's your review let's go ahead and jump to future me so what you're listening to now is the comica adcaster c2 on my desk this is what i've been usually using um, for my streaming setup and everything it's hooked up into the wave xlr just brought in or wherever no filter no vsts or anything no plugins added um, this is just you know the raw uh, fine fine am8 in white sitting here on the desk i have a gobi fan going right next to it and usually this is my setup this is kind of the reason why you can kind of hear the noise floor this is where i would keep the microphone at so i'm going to stop talking so you can hear the noise floor and that's honestly not that bad so what i'm going to do though is i'm going to turn on the vsts so this is how the Comica Adcaster C2 sounds when I put some VSTs added to what I've set the microphone to sound like on the actual mixer itself. All I did was add a little bit more of a EQ or wherever within the VSTs within the Wavelink uh, software. You kind of want to get those rumblings and everything out of the way. Adding those little extra, uh, I would say VSTs or plugins or whatever, like I said, even if you don't have the Wavelink software, you're still probably going to kind of want to do that in your editing software or um, through your OBS, so just keep that in mind. What are my overall thoughts of using this for about a week? I'm gonna talk to you guys from a standpoint of, again, a content creator actually using this, put it into their workflow, and what can you expect, I guess, from that point? And is it worth your money at this price point of being $189? Now, the Comica C2 is definitely something that's there for, I would say, people who are probably gonna be doing a lot of 
I would say live reactions or just recorded reactions. Let's say they're watching a video that they're reacting to, um, or, you know, they have somebody else like their significant other or a guest or something like that. And you're reacting to the same video and you want to hear audio, you know, into the two headphone ports or something like that. Like me and my wife sat down and we did another video together, um, taste testing or doing something like that. Um, this would be good for it. Any more than that, I would say, obviously, you're going to want something like a, a Comica product that just recently came out with is the, the VMQ, I believe, or how you, however, they, I'm sorry if, if that's not the way to pronounce it, Comica, I'm sorry, but that's another product that I have reached out to them. So hopefully in the future, they will allow me to cover it um, because that would be something that's really interesting for uh, being able to mic myself up, my wife up, and maybe my son when he gets a little bit older and do like videos together and vlogs and stuff like that. But that's a little bit more expensive, but I do think that would be a step up as far as something above this, where this is probably more of a sit down, do interviews or live stream together or something like that. This is going to be that complete package that you're looking at. Let's go ahead and jump into some cons that I noticed. This top part, like I mentioned in the box and unboxing uh, portion, I was right. This is a finger mitt, uh, print magnet up here, even if you try to wipe it and stuff like that. So if some people have more porous and uh, oily hands or something like that, some people are more prone to that. So just know you're going to be cleaning off this a lot. Um, the touch sensitive stuff on the top or wherever to get to the different uh, the pitches and the different um, voice changing options and stuff like that, that's going to be very touch sensitive. So even if you somewhat brush it, sometimes it can activate. That's something I noticed as well. Um, there's no way to not monitor your audio as far as like you talking or wherever in your headphones and muting your voice, but still hear like the audio from, you know, your little pads out here that you have the two custom ones and the ones that come from the manufacturer. There's no way to just have that play and not your voice. Um, primarily because if you're going to monitor your own voice, you're going to want to hear the, the, the sound effects or whatever. So you get them dialed in. Um, the problem with that is that maybe you want to change your highs, your mids, your lows, your reverb on this stuff or something like that, or the gain and all that stuff, wherever the problem is, is that this is not software based. So if you adjust any of these adjustments just for those custom, uh, vocal settings or wherever, and then you turn off those, you have to redo these knobs and dials and stuff like that again back to what you had previously um so that's something that you're gonna have to i guess deal with when it comes to you know using this audio device another thing is is that these knobs again i've said it before they don't click in there's no absolute uh, different faders or wherever these two faders down here that you see are literally for your microphone volumes and stuff and to dial it in or wherever the gain knob and i've tested different microphones with it or wherever the, the preamps are really good in this thing but what you get here basically if you're a streamer or something like that and you don't really care about adding uh, vsts or really eqing your microphone too too much you just want something really basic or wherever that's going to make your microphone sound good and you don't care about really taking it to the next level like somebody who's a nit little nitpicky like i am then this audio interface is going to be great for you um it's plug and play the computer automatically recognizes it it says it by name obs sees it by name the battery life or wherever obviously you can see it on right now apparently up to six hours i leave it plugged in and speaking of plug-in i would say the cable that runs from this to your pc or to a laptop is long enough but any cable that else that comes with it in my opinion is a relatively too short the one that's just supposed to plug into actual power to charge this thing or leave it powered on or wherever to constantly charge it it's it's a little bit on the shorter side so i have to have it at a weird angle so i'll leave something in the description that it's going to be a usb uh, charging like dock station thing or wherever that plugs into a wall outlet and um you can have this plugged in to get that extra cable length so if that's something that you're interested in you could do that or just get a longer type c cable but having the super long cable wherever for your pc to run into this and not having the same length for the power, like for charging or whatever delivery. Like if you're sitting down to record, I understand six hours, but streamers nowadays, they can stream for long periods of hours. I know people that do 14 hour streams, eight hour streams, or, or at least bare minimum six plus hour streams. Go ahead and just get you, a, make sure that you have a longer type C cable. And the competition with that is going to be the cables that you get that showed in an unboxing to hook up to your camera um, or a phone. Those cables, wherever those TRS and the TRRS cables to be able to do that uh, function, those are way too short. And they come with two, so I guess you could hook up to multiple different angles or maybe hook up to a phone 
and your camera or wherever to have different angles or wherever. This is something that's an audio interface. So you want it to be in the arm's length to be able to hit the different types of uh, audios and stuff like that, especially if you're sitting at a desk and you're doing an interview or a live reaction or something like that. And your PC monitor or whatever is kind of further away and your camera's on a tripod to the side or somewhere different or wherever that ha not having that length of cable is just weird to me not having that included so you're either going to want to get a separate one or a, some kind of type of extension cable wherever to extend that length um the io ports on the back are fine i don't see a problem with any of them or anything like that it's just perfectly fine and lastly what i would say again with these touchscreen stuff or wherever yes it's fingerprint magnets but you know, pressing into holding it down or wherever, or the touch button or wherever, and holding it for like three to five seconds. Um, it's a little bit kind of too long, especially when you're trying to uh, do something funny really quick on screen. You sit there and hit the button, it activates whatever pitch or anything that you want, and then you have to hold it down to turn it off. Whereas when you hit the laughter or in these hot pads or wherever, as soon as you turn it on, if you hit it again, it immediately cuts that's way better than having these or wherever yes it saves whatever one you were on so if you use a popular thing like changing your pitch into like a baby pitch and you hold down the button or wherever the touch sensor button and then you press it again or wherever to activate it it will stay on that baby pitch which is really good the problem is is like i said when you have to press it and hold it down if you don't hold it down for a long enough time it doesn't cut off so you have to make sure that you're cutting it off again it you have to stop talking because it would be kind of weird if you're talking or wherever you said the funny thing now you have to wait and then you can start talking again if you use a, a thing i will leave in the description or whatever it's called voice mod um, and if you have a stream deck which many streamers and content creators do have some kind of iteration of a hotkey or a stream deck or something like that so when you activate it or wherever the voice will automatically activate so on the stream deck you can press the button it will start the the soundboard or it will start the voice modification and as soon as you press it again it would immediately stop there's no holding there's no it's instantaneous pretty much um so you could just do it that way wherever if you wanted the same kind of thing like that but then at that point it's like why did you kind of get this thing because if you touch it it's just going to cycle through the different pitches the different scenes the the electronic voices the autotune would turn off and on but all these other ones you have so many different options and eq presets and stuff like that should you just cycle through them because they're not dedicated buttons um again that might be something that might be a deterrent for some people the the knobs and stuff feel really really good it doesn't feel cheap at all this audio interface or wherever it feels like you got your money's worth from it just using it for a small bit of time like i said comica if you are seeing this um if you can send me out the white version so i can do you know photos b-rolls take product shots and stuff for you guys and um again i would use this like maybe in my wife's setup or wherever and have the white one on my setup um because i'm still currently building her setup but this one for the price point if you're getting into live streaming and you're possibly going to do reactions with somebody else or have guests or maybe you're live streaming with somebody else or wherever all the time like you're sniffing at other or something like that you do like a dual live stream and you want like the same audio mixer or wherever unfortunately you only have one uh, option as far as sending this straight to one pc and not two pcs but you're able to sit there and maybe you're playing a party game or a co-op game or wherever on stream with somebody or something like that you will have two microphones plugged into this you'll be able to control both you can activate the different stuff or wherever for both and everything and maybe you like to sit down and do a at home podcast with two of you or wherever you will be able to do all that from here so again comica is killing it this year going into 2024 with having just products like this that are coming out that are branching and putting together so many different types of ways to do content creation into one and it's allowing you to do multiple different things instead of just just one thing and doing it great this is doing multiple things and also doing it great i recently covered the comica vm30 i'll leave a link in the description best shotgun microphone and it allows you to have different avenues of doing content whether it be interview content or um content like this with talking head with a microphone overhead or even using it as a stream mic and stuff like that and being able to walk around with it booming overhead wireless all just wireless and you can hook it up to three different design devices all at once that other um lavalier system where we're having four transmitters and one receiver you can have four guests you could be you and somebody else or wherever and just have those as backups and stuff 
I would really love to cover that. Please comment cuff. Let me cover that as a in a review because that white version, it just looks aesthetically pleasing. It looks completely awesome. Um, so again, Comica is just killing this stuff. I don't know what else to tell you as far as a using scenario. Again, I could have just went through and read this long, big, uh, I would say user manual, like you will see other people possibly do reviews on, but I wanted to talk to you guys again about my experience using this. There are other options out there. Like I mentioned the fine, fine one that's at $50, but it lacks what I, this one supplies that I complained about not having, you know, these controls for your high mids and stuff like that, EQing and everything. It's just physical volume sliders and that's pretty much it. And you get the, like the reverbs and stuff and that's it. This is what I was talking about that pro version. If you go watch the video, this is that. So again, I highly recommend this. If you're still on the fence about it, get it. I'm telling you, you won't, you won't regret it. Um, another mixer people would talk about this go XLR. XLR is a paperweight now. It's not receiving updates from the manufacturer or anything like that. So I wouldn't get that. And on top of that, it's like triple the cost of this. Um, and yes, it has so software, but again, you see the problem with having software. If the company dies or something like that, or it just never gets updates again, you're pretty much stuck with what you got, which is going to be a $400, $500, $300 paperweight. Whereas this, you don't really have to worry about it or wherever. It's just going to work because it's physical. Another one would be the Wave XLR. And like I said, yes, it's software based. It allows you to have the, the VSTs and the plugins to EQ your microphone and everything. You could really dial it in and have different presets for different microphones that you're dragging in. Like the microphone I'm using right now is plugged into the Fine Fine, which is routed into the Wavelink software, which has VSTs plug, uh, plugins and stuff running. So I don't have to do that while editing. Whereas when I'm using this for live streaming, I have it dragged in there too and have a little bit of EQs uh, added or wherever just to really enhance it. And I don't have to add that in editing or post or, or whatever. And I can do that even with my Wavelink of uh, XLR or wherever that's actually microphone is actually plugged into. And I can do that with the cam link, which is dragged into the Wavelink software. So if I use a wireless lavalier system or I use the, the Comica VM30, all that stuff is already EQ'd, which is really good, which is a little bit above this. But again, you're going to have to deal with the headaches. You got to deal with the problems and stuff like that. And like I said, the Wave, Wave XLR, all it is is just a little brick that has a knob and that's it. You're paying more so to use the the, the software, uh, whereas this is just way better and it costs like $20 more, but you don't have the headaches, like I said, of the software and the actual physical module or wherever has more buttons and stuff like that on this than getting the Wave XLR. In order to control the stuff like this, you can control on it. You have to get a third party device like the PC Panel Pro, which is the one I recommend to everybody to be able to control uh, sub mixes and any mixes aware from audio inputs or audio outputs on your PC. That thing is $100 in itself. So essentially to get the Wave, link, the Wave XLR to work properly like this thing, you would pay $260, whereas this is $189. And you don't have to worry about janky software or like all the problems like I listed before with software. So you've been looking at mixers that kind of do the same thing because there are, like I said, cheaper mixers that have these pitches and all that stuff, wherever, you know, put together on something like this. But all those videos that I have seen, and that's why I landed on the Comica one and I reached out to them specifically to recover this and that wireless lavalier system. So again, hopefully they send it out to me for review. And I did that review on the Comica microphone because they're doing it correctly. Yes, it's a little bit more on the expensive side than some of the other ones that are going to be below $100 that are going to do this, but they're not going to stack up to this. I'm telling you right now, they knocked it out of the park with this audio mixer. I am saying from somebody who's been using different interfaces, different computers, monitors, peripherals, all that stuff. Um, this is going to get, like I said, my seal of approval. When somebody asks me about the audio mixer and everybody else is saying this, that, and a third, I'm going to be pointing to this one. This is, this is going to be my bottom line. Like this, if you want to start content creation or wherever you're looking for something that can last you for a long time, streamers, content creators, the Comica Adcaster C2 is going to last you and it's going to be the best bang for your buck. Also, I know this video and some other videos are not going to have a whole bunch of B-roll and stuff. It's because my slider broke. I'm in talks with the company or wherever to possibly get some replacement parts or wherever because it's out of the warranty window. 
So I do apologize for not really having any B-roll or sliding or anything like that. It's just the only way I do my B-roll. There's no really way for me to get really good B-roll like I usually do in my past videos. So I do apologize for that. Um, I've tried to reach out to companies to have them send me sliders or for review and stuff like that and possibly replace what I used to use, but no dice so far. So I do apologize for not having really good uh, B-roll, but there's only so much I can do, you know what I'm saying, in the current situation that I'm in. So with that being said, though, thank you guys for, so much for taking the time out your day to watch the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid test day. God bless you and yours. Deuces to everybody. Much love.